I'm going to read you The Littlest Yak by Lou Fraser. The Littlest Yak by Lou Fraser, illustrated by Kate Hindley. On the tip of the top of a mountain all snowy, where the ice swirling, toe curling blizzards were blowy, in a herd full of huddling yaks, big and small, lived Gertie, the littlest yak of them all. Now Gertie was great at being a yak, with the curliest, whirliest wool on her back. She could clip-clop up cliffs, no matter how slippy, on little yak hooves that were splendidly grippy. Yes, Gertie was all that a small yak should be, but there isn't, she sighed, any bigness in me. I'm the yak at the back who is stuck in her smallness. I want to grow up and have greatness and tallness with the hugest of hooves and her humongous horns too. There isn't a thing that a big yak can't do. But yaks, Mummy smiled, are all shapes and sizes and bigness can come in all sorts of disguises. Maybe one day you'll be huge, you'll be tall. So don't rush to grow up when it's great being small. Yet as night tiptoed in and the stars filled the sky, from the heart of the herd, Gertie sighed a huge sigh. <gasps> Hugeness and tallness seem so far away. I don't want to be small. I need bigness today. So Gertie began on a growing up plan and ate every veggie a little yak can. She patted up mountains, she clattered down hills, she hopped and she skipped and she never sat still. And she read lots of books to make her thoughts grow because grown-ups have big things to think and to know. And though Gertie hoped and she wished and she tried, the days slipped away, but no growing arrived. <laughs> what if, she sniffed, I, I'm a yak who can't grow? And a salty tear plopped from her cheek to the snow. But wait, what was that? Something was coming. A hundred yak hoofbeats were steadily drumming and leading the herd in a snowflakey flurry was Mummy Yak grunting. Oh, Gertie, please hurry. Look up, a yak stuck on the craggy cliff's edge at the end of the narrowest, rockiest ledge. Our hooves are too heavy. Our horns are too wide to squeeze on a ledge on a steep mountainside. But you are our littlest, grippiest yak. Only you can squeeze up there and bring that yak back. You need me? Gertie gasped. Be because I'm so small? My smallness can do something big after all. Woohoo! And Gertie was off. There was no time to waste over the ice-frosted rocks in great haste. Up higher and higher, leaping and springing, then onto the ledge where a yak shape was clinging. Oh! Gertie squealed as she stopped in her tracks. Why, you're the tiniest, weeniest, teeniest of yaks. <laughs> I wanted to clip-clop up cliffs, the yak shivered, but, but I'm not very grippy. And his teeny horns quivered. Well, gripping, smiled Gertie, is what I do best. <laughs>
Just hold on tightly, and I'll do the rest. So onto her back, the teeniest yak leapt, and down through the rocks and the ice skirty swept. Home to the herd far below, cheering loudly. Gertie, you did it! They all grunted proudly. You did it, Gertie! You did it! The teeniest Jack would be stuck without you. There are some things only a small Jack can do. Gertie, you did it! Then Gertie was wrapped in a warm woolly hug, and into her ear, Mummy whispered with love. As sure as the stars in the glittering sky, you'll be all grown up in the blink of an eye. But it's here and it's now, whilst you're wonderfully small, that you found you've got bigness inside after all. And as Gertie gazed up at the moon's silver light, being small, the little yak smiled, is all right. For I'm just the right size that a Gertie should be. I am perfectly little and perfectly me. I hope you enjoyed that story. If you want to hear more, subscribe. Bye bye.